you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like for you to open them. Go to Mark 11, 22. Just hold your place there. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, We walk by faith and not by sight. If you know that scripture, say it with me. We walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 1, 17 says, The just shall live by faith. Amen. So you and I have got to walk by faith and we've got to live by faith. Do you agree? Say amen. amen. Romans 10, 17 tells us how that faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of that faith. Yeah. That faith, the church doesn't create faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why you can't have faith in Muhammad because faith comes from the word of God. Amen. You can't have faith in Islam because it comes from the Bible, the word of God. That's why you can't have faith in the government, even in the Declaration of Independence, as good as it is. That doesn't build faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. Somebody say amen. amen. So you got to go to Jesus. You got to find Jesus in the Word of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Mm. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrew, I mean Ephesians 6, 6, that that faith is a shield. And it will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That faith is a shield. For you, it is a shield. When I was a young man, I would read books. When I was a, a pastor in my 20s, I'd read books and they said, faith is a muscle. Uh, it is not a muscle, it's a shield. Nowhere in the Bible is faith called a muscle. It's a shield and we pick it up and we use it and we lift it and it quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yeah. It can't quench anything on the ground. You've got to pick it up. You've got to pick faith up. Let me say that again. You got to pick faith up and you got to lift it up. Oh, you got to lift it up. It's like Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. And when you lift up Jesus, you're lifting up the shield of faith. Anybody want to say amen? Don't lift up what you're going through. Lift up your faith. Don't lift up what you've been through. Lift up your faith. Don't lift up the devil. Lift up your faith. Don't even lift up yourself. Just lift up faith. Faith will take care of you. Give the Lord a crazy praise. So faith is a shield that I can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hebrews 11, 2 says, By faith the elders obtained a good report. So by faith I can turn a bad report into a good report. I can turn a bad life into a good life. I can turn a bad situation into a good situation. Can I just tell it like I really want to tell it? Goliath, you're dead. Hallelujah. Walls of Jericho, you've come down. Jordan River, you have been been parted somebody give God a crazy praise in the house of God it is a shield of faith and by it we obtain a good report first John 5 4 says this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith so if it's in the world, if it's of the world, if it's from the world, hallelujah, we have victory over it because of faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've got a shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. We have overcoming faith that will overcome the world in Jesus' name. Give God a crazy praise. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So everything you say in faith pleases God. When you lift up your shield of faith, it pleases God. When you believe to receive, that's faith, and it pleases God. When you pray believing, that pleases God. When you say it, say it, say it, say it, even though it looks crazy, you keep speaking the word of God, that's the faith that pleases God. Somebody give God a crazy praise. Somebody shout amen. 
Hallelujah. If you were here two weeks ago, we started in Mark eleven twenty two. Have faith in God. When you start learning about faith, even the Bible tells you where to aim your faith. And number one, you have faith in God. Say it with me. Have faith in God. This is what faith in God will do. Verse number 23. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, don't fuss, don't fight, speak the word. Don't give up in your mouth, keep speaking the word. Don't fall apart in your words. Don't let your words bring you down. Let your words pick up that shield of faith. Listen to me. Pastor, how do I pick up the shield of faith? By speaking the word of the living God. That's how you lift up the shield of faith. You don't lift it up with your hands and hold it in the air. You lift it up with your voice. You lift it up with your words. You lift it up with your voice. You speak the word of God into the atmosphere. That is your shield of faith. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, say unto you, Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, praying is saying. Praying is saying. Praying is speaking. Praying isn't thinking. Praying is speaking. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe. Where? In your heart. Believe that you receive them. Where? In your heart. And you shall have them. Give God a crazy praise. Have faith in God. The second thing last Sunday that we preached on is faith in the power of God. Colossians, Colossians, hallelujah to God. They're going to get there. Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, we were buried with him in baptism, where also we are risen with him through faith, through faith in the operation of God. That word operation, if you were here last week, if you weren't, the CD is only $795.83. Amen. I thought I'd get at least one amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Through faith in the operation. The operation is the Greek word for working energy. Working energy. That you've got to put your faith in the energy of God. God is not a God that has all this power and does nothing with it. God is not a God that has all this energy and does anything with it. God is a God that's power works. His energy works. And the exceeding greatness of his power is to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought. Can I tell you? Can I get somebody to believe me right now? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is aimed your direction. Somebody say amen. Amen. Stay with me. Let's go to the book of Corinthians. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but was in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. So number one, you have faith in God. Number two, you have faith in the strength and the power of God, which is working strength and working power. For we know that all things work. You don't need a new battery. You just need God to do it. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. All you've got to do is love God back and God will work for you. Somebody say amen. Stay with me now in the word of God. Let's go to Romans 3.25. Have faith in God. Have faith in his power. 
Romans 3 25 this is where we want to begin this morning whom God has set forth to be a propitiation talking about Jesus to be a mercy seat through faith in his blood faith in the blood say it with me faith in the blood say it again faith in the blood way back in the days of Cain and Abel Abel put faith in the blood of a sacrifice Cain put no faith in the blood of a sacrifice Abel came to where the great sword was that turned every direction there were cherubims there cherubims in the Bible always are where the mercy seat is read your Bible even in the old covenant tabernacle there were two cherubims that made up the mercy seat over the ark of the covenant hallelujah Cain would come to where that sword was that turned every direction and he would take his sacrifice and he would pierce it into that sword that stood there and it would draw blood and there where those cherubims were and that sword was he would offer a sacrifice to almighty God and it would please God that's why later on in the Bible in the book of Psalms God cried out awake O sword against my servant and that sword would awake again and it would come into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and he would shed his blood for the remission of our sins hallelujah somebody say amen Amen. stay with me now say faith in the blood blood. let's shout it out again faith in the blood when I was a little boy, my mamma and Papo Evans is where all of us that are here today that are associated with them learned about the power of the blood of Jesus. I want to tell you a quick story that I've told one time before in this building. They're in their bedroom at uh, 1942 Amarillo Street. That house is still there. 1942 Amarillo Street. His church was at 12... 12- 26 Oak Street at 1942 Amarillo Street when I would go spend the night with them I would mama would say come in here we're going to pray and we would go in there I would pray until they snored how many with me they would snore back and forth and answer each other I think it was uh, snoring and interpretation how many with me say amen but when I'd first get in bed with them, here'd be Papa, I'd tell you just exactly how they laid. I would crawl in the bed, Papa would be to my right, Mama would be to my left, and they would plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. Yeah. Yeah. One night when I was there, I looked to the left, there was a window there on Mama's side of the bed, a window here, two windows there, but over here was the dresser. I would look to my left and I would see something coming at me through the window. They had uh, their, the, the curtains, but they had a white, kind of uh, light curtain there uh, that uh, sheer thank you thank you Lisa been there she knows what I'm talking about a sheer and I could see an image coming with big ears an ugly looking creature that would come but my mama and papa would plead the blood and that creature then would vanish it would come mama and papa plead the blood and it would vanish it would come and they'd plead the blood they never saw it I saw it I saw it I saw it and it became an image in my mind that no matter what I face I could plead the blood of Jesus Christ I could put my faith in the blood of Jesus Christ if you know anything about me the blood of Jesus reaches from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet if you know anything about you and me the blood of Jesus is on the top of your head and the bottom of your feet the very first time you step into this church we start putting the blood of Jesus Christ on you we do not forget that you are here we always remember that you're here if you don't come back for a year we still put the blood of Jesus I can say that even though you're not that excited about it because I know myself and I know I do it in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Go ahead and give God a crazy praise. Give God a crazy praise. Through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin. Faith in his blood. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. 
Why do I put faith in the blood of Jesus? Listen carefully. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed. Redeemed means bought and paid for. You are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. Silver and gold. You are not redeemed with silver and gold or precious jewels. Neither from the vain conversation received by the traditions of your father. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Precious blood. Say it with me. Precious blood. Say it again. Precious blood. The blood of Cain. When uh, blood of Abel, when Cain killed Abel, went into the ground. The blood of Jesus never went into the ground. The blood of Jesus went into heaven. It's precious blood. Say it with me. It's precious blood. Shout it out loud. It's precious blood. That word precious there literally means it is honorable. It is honored blood. It is honored blood. Every angel honors the blood of Jesus. That's why when you are washed in the blood, angels come as ministering spirits to minister to you. They honor the blood. Therefore, you can come boldly into the throne room of heaven because you have that blood. It's honored blood. It's honored blood. It is so costly. It is so valuable. It is so honored. It is so precious that a devil can't get through it. When you speak about it, the devil will leave your home he will leave your body he will leave your business he will leave your child he will leave your family he is an unclean spirit the devils are unclean spirits but the blood of Jesus is pure and precious and honorable and holy The blood of Jesus is so honorable and holy that when it touches you, you are automatically the righteousness of God. You are automatically the righteousness of God. The very moment that blood touches you, you are instantly the temple of the living God. The moment that... Somebody say amen. Amen. The moment that blood touches you, you are righteous. The moment that blood touches you, you are the temple of the living God. The moment that blood touches you, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The moment that blood touches you, the Holy Spirit of adoption steps inside your body. The moment you're touched by the blood, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things pass away. I've been touched by the blood. I've been washed in the blood. Somebody say amen. Woo, give God the glory. Would you do it? Precious blood. Honorable blood. Costly blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness in this place? Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Hebrews 9 12. Hallelujah, are you there? Amen. Listen to this scripture. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, Jesus entered at once into the holy place, having obtained by that blood eternal redemption. Forever redemption. Are you with me? Next verse. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Say it with me. How much more shall the blood of Christ, whoa, the blood of the anointed one, hmm, the blood of the, the anointed one, the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit Offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works that you can serve the living God. Now I'm going to say something to you. The moment the blood of Jesus touches you, you don't have to serve a habit, you don't have to serve your past, you don't have to serve nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You don't have to serve a sickness. You don't have to serve a disease. You don't have to serve the curse of the law. You don't have to serve a habit. You don't have to serve worry or fear. You can serve now the living God. I'm going to say this over all of us. We refuse to serve anything from the enemy. Can I say this over you? We refuse to serve high blood pressure. We refuse to serve sugar diabetes. We refuse to serve migraine headaches. We refuse to serve cancer. We refuse to serve sickness. We refuse to serve disease. We refuse to serve pancreatic cancer. We refuse to serve the past. We refuse to serve the enemy. We refuse to serve fear and worry. We choose to serve the Lord our God. Come on, somebody. Hmm. It, can I ask you one question? Am I in the right church? Hmm. Give God a crazy praise. Stay with me. Hallelujah. How much more? Say it with me. How much more? Luke 22, 19 and 20. Stay with me now. Luke 22, 19 and 20. This is the upper room. Jesus is breaking the bread and pouring in the wine. And they're fixing to have the Last Supper, the communion. And listen to the words of Jesus at the Last Supper. He took the bread and gave thanks and he broke it. And he said unto them, this is my body. Say it out loud. This is my body. He didn't say this is a representation of my body. He didn't say this represents my body. He said this is my body. Now this came from the Bible, some Bible bookstore here in town. It's a, a, a wafer that is not leavened. We buy them, we bring them here, we set them up in this place, and here they are, and you're looking at it and you're saying, there's no way that this is the body of Christ. No, it's not in the natural. But by faith, when you eat it, you're eating by faith that you believe you're partaking of the body of Jesus Christ. Anybody want to say amen? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. It makes no, absolutely no sense at all to go over and lay your hand on somebody in the name of Jesus and they, if they're sick, they get well in Jesus' name. Amen. There's absolutely no way that it seems like that would work that when you lay your hand on somebody in the name of Jesus and the Bible says that the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. It makes absolutely no sense that we walk by faith and not by sight. It makes no sense. But we don't walk by sense. We walk by faith. Anybody going to help me? It makes, it did not, I can't even get it. Why? That taking an apron or a handkerchief from the body of Paul and taking it from his body and then taking it home to some grandparent or grandchild or some mate and placing it on their body that a devil would come out of their body that a cancer would come out of their body that a tumor would come out of their body but it happened because we walk by faith and not by sight somebody say amen but the action of it is the faith without works is dead. So this is the action of faith. This is the shield of faith. The action of faith. The action of faith. The action of faith. The action of faith. Action of faith for faith without works is dead. This is faith with action. This is faith with action. Hallelujah. They love me. So this is my body which is given for you. This do 
in remembrance of me. Next verse. Stay with me now. This is my body, which is broken for you. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new. The new. Behold, I make all things new. New starts with this cup. New starts right here. New starts with the blood. This is grape juice. Come on. This is grape juice. And I look at it. I know we bought the grape juice at the store. I know we keep it in that white refrigerator back there. God bless that old thing. And they bring it in here. They pour it up. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't look where it come from. We don't look at the container that it was in. We don't even look at the color of it. For we walk by faith and not by Mm. So this is the cup, the New Testament, new covenant in my blood. The new covenant is in my blood. The new covenant, the New Testament, the new. Behold, I make all things new. Forget what's old and get over to the new. I make all things new. There's way too much old in our lives. Are you with me now? Woo, Jesus. Off the New Testament, in my blood, which is shed or put out of me, put out of me and put onto you. It's no longer inside Jesus. It's outside Jesus so it can be on you. New Testament. New, new. Somebody say new. So I take the new and overcome the old. The old me with the new covenant. That same old stuff with the new covenant. I take the new covenant, the new, the new, the new. Somebody say amen. Amen. What the old couldn't do, the new can do. Is anybody here? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Stay with me now. Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews 7, 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but bringing in a better hope did. So what God did with that new covenant is bring in a better hope. Everybody say better. Better. Everybody shout better. Better. Everything that Jesus did, he did to make life better. Everything that Jesus did, he did to make life better. So he brought in a better hope through this new covenant. The old covenant didn't have a hope as good as the new covenant. So the new covenant is in his blood. So in his blood is a better hope. Now faith is the substance of things. Anybody going to? Anybody going to? The blood gives me a better hope. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith is the substance of the better hope. Somebody say better hope. So I can start hoping better than I've ever hoped. My expectation can get better than it's ever been. I've got to get my expectation up this morning. Is your expectation up to the level of a better hope? Is your expectation, that's what hope is. Hope is expectation. The devil, if he can get your hopes and your expectations, ladies and gentlemen, you have nothing for your faith to bring into reality. It's time to get you a better hope. It's time to get you a better expectancy. Somebody say better hope. hope. Hallelujah. The bringing of a better hope did by which we draw nigh to God so that better hope helps us to get closer to God, closer to God, closer to God, closer to God because we have a better hope, a better expectation. We can draw closer to God than we have ever been. Because I'm expecting to get closer to God. I'm I'm expecting as I get closer to God, something to change in me. He's the Lord. He changes not. I am Randy. I am always changing. 
So by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. So now I have a better hope and now I have a better testament or a better covenant. I have a better covenant. I've got to listen. Thank God for Israel. Israel, we watch Israel. It's God's time clock. But I, I don't, don't get mad at me. I and you have a better covenant with God than even the nation of Israel has. They still have a covenant with God. Their covenant is unbelievable. Jerusalem is the city of God. Come on. The Jews will live in Jerusalem. You and I will live in the new Jerusalem. But it's both Jerusalem. So I have a better hope. I have a better testament. I have a better covenant. Better. Somebody say better. The devil don't want you to get any better. I said, the devil don't want your marriage to get any better, your body to get any better, your mind to get any better, your finances to get any better, your feelings to get any better. He doesn't want you to get any better. Why? Because if it does, it, it's because of a new covenant and the blood and the pro- everything. Everything is better with Jesus. Better. It's not better with blue bonnet on it. It's better with Jesus on it. Smile at me. Stay with me now. Better. Somebody shout better. Better. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices. Down here, they purified the tabernacle with the blood of a sacrifice, the blood of a lamb, the blood of an ox, the blood of a bull, but heaven with the blood of Jesus Christ. Better sacrifice. Come on. And so I say a better sacrifice. So I got a better hope. I got a better covenant because I got a better sacrifice than Moses had. Than Moses had. Than that covenant priest down here. I've got a better covenant. I've got a better sacrifice than was ever offered in the tabernacle. That was ever offered in the Old Testament. I've got a better sacrifice than was ever offered. One time Samuel uh, brought the children of Israel out. They'd been in, oh, it was terrible. Eli Eli was the high priest. He allowed prostitutes to set up houses of prostitution uh, uh, right as you would get ready to go into the tabernacle. He allowed them. His boys, Hopni and Phinehas, they were uh, taking more than God would allow, all kinds of stuff. And so he got, he, he, uh, in his chair, fell backwards and broke his neck and died. And the children of Israel were living in hardship. And all of a sudden, Samuel said, it's time for us to break this hardship up. It's time for us to get past this mess. These Philistines are killing us. This sickness and disease everywhere. So he said, let's get out to Mitzvah. Let's go to Mitzvah and let's call upon the name of the Lord. And when they get out to Mitzvah, the Philistines say, we can't let them make anything better. We got to stop them before things get better. We got to stop them before they can believe. We got to stop them before it get, they get a breakthrough. So the Philistines start gathering as they gather to Mitzvah to call on the name of the Lord. And Samuel sees them coming. And the Bible says he grabs a lamb and he slays that lamb and offers it up to the Lord. And the Philistines are getting close. But because he offers a sacrifice, the Bible says it begins to thunder with a loud thunder. And the Bible says that the Philistines become confused and begin to kill each other and destroy each other. If that sacrifice can do that, I've got a better. Sometimes we are not looking at the value of the cross. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. To them that perish foolishness. So the devil tries to throw even into the life of a believer some kind of perishing something. So when they look at the cross, it will seem foolish and it's not working. But on us that are saved, it is the power of God. Are y'all here? Stay with me now. A better thing. 
and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. Somebody say better things. Amen. So I have a better covenant. I've got everything better. I've got everything better. I've got everything better. I've got everything better. I've got better promises. I don't know what they did with that scripture, but we got better promises. We got better covenant. We got better sacrifices. We got better things. We got better. 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 Somebody shout better. Woo. Better. Stay with me now. Turn with me in your Bibles. Galatians 4.10. This is what happened with Abel's blood. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. Abel's blood went into the ground. Jesus' blood went into heaven. When Abel's blood went into the ground, man's blood had never been shed. Man's blood was never, been, was never meant to come out of his body. Man's blood was never meant to come out of his body. When it comes out of your body, as long as it stays in your body, it's alive. It comes out of your body, it dies. It was never meant to come out of a human body. This is going to be hard for you to believe. God never meant for man to have surgery in the beginning. God never meant for man's body to be cut. He meant for the life of the flesh to be in the blood. And he never meant, he said, if anybody spills, man, if a man spills man's blood in the law, that blood will be required from that man that spilled another man's blood. God never meant for man's blood to be spilled. In fact, he put a law in it that if you spill blood, your blood will be spilled. That's the power of even our blood in the eyes of God. Let me hear what I just said. His blood went into the ground. It did. He cried. It cried. It cried out to God. It cried out to God. Opened her mouth to receive his blood. Opened its mouth to receive its blood. And what it did, it brought a curse because blood was never meant to go into the ground. And it cursed the ground. It was meant to be in the body. Why? It was created by the Spirit of God. Blood was created by the Spirit of God. Blood was not created from the dust. Man was created by the dust. Blood was created by the breath of God. And the blood of man was then tainted because of sin. The blood of Jesus is precious blood. So it's a better sacrifice, better covenant, better, 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 better. Almost through. Mark 5.25. A certain woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. Why? Because of sin, because of the curse. Blood would flow out of her body. An issue of blood for 12 years. Stay with me now. Hallelujah. Suffered many things of many physicians. Spent all that she had. Listen carefully. And was nothing bettered. Nothing bettered. But all of a sudden coming down the road was a better hope. Was better hope. Better covenant. Better promises. Better testament. A better sacrifice. So a woman that couldn't get better, nothing bettered, came over and touched the hem of a better covenant, a better promise, a better hope. She couldn't get better, but touched a better covenant, a better hope, a better promise. And even though that he had not yet offered it, it was in him. It was in him. The better covenant was still in his blood. 
the better promises was him. The better hope was him. That's why everywhere he went, everybody that touched him was made whole. They couldn't get better, but they touched better. If he touched them, they couldn't get better, but if he touched them, better touched them. So better either touched them or they touched better. And now that was before the better promise. Everything was shed. Everything was released. It was held inside his body. Better. Somebody say better. Better. All they had to do was let better touch them or them touch better. And when they could not get better, they instantly got better because they touched better hope, better sacrifice, better promises. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Better. Somebody say better. I can't believe. I can't believe. Come on, somebody help me. Better. It's better. When they touch better, instantly the fountain of her blood dried up because better now had come into life. Jesus said, virtue. He said, who touched me? They said, everybody's touching you. He said, yeah, but virtue came out of me. Better came out of me. Better, better, stronger, stronger. The word better, every time you see it in the new covenant, it means stronger. Strong came out of me. Power came out of me. Virtue came out of me. Better, better flowed out of me. Better, a better life. A a better, better healing. Better health. Better, 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 better. Not, Not better up, but better up. Better. Better. Came behind the press and touched him. For she said within herself, keep going, keep going. Now. Hallelujah. For she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Why? Because he's got something better for me than anybody else can give me. Better. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And straightway the fountain of her blood dried up. Why? Because she touched better hope. Better covenant. Better promises. Better sacrifice dried up she felt in her body better that's all they would have had to write it just better she got better you know when you got saved you got better oh my god better if you're here right now And things have not been getting better for you. I want you to come up here with me right now. Because you and I are going to touch better hope. Better covenant. Better promises. Better. It is past time for you to be better. Because better was instituted 2,000 years ago. Better. better better now when think when you when you come you got to quit looking at your symptoms you got to quit looking at what happened to you you got to quit looking at what you've been through you got to quit being afraid and you got to believe in better and Jesus is better a better covenant established on better promises do y'all believe that? Better. Better. This lady right here, y'all see this lady? I thought not. Y'all see this sweet lady right here? She came up to me. Uh, this is Tuesday night. She handed me some stuff. And she handed me a, a card. Little Don, she handed me a card. And uh, I didn't have time then because we were starting Bible study. So I put it to the side and took it home. And I laid it on the table at my house. (laughs) And I looked over there and said, oh my God. And I walked over there and I picked it up. And I said, Fonda, come here. I said, this woman has written on the front and the back of this envelope over 
something like 25 to 30 statements that I've made out of my mouth since she has been here. And I asked her later on, I said, did you? Did you? She said, I went through all my notes since the, the five years or so I've been here and I found things that really ministered to me and I wrote them all over the envelope of that card. I was, I was, I don't get surprised very often. It was incredible. And she wrote them down for me. She said, I wanted you to know about the things that have blessed me most. I don't know what you do with something like that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Then she wrote me a letter. She wrote my wife a letter. Then she made this deal up and she put Victory Church and made this thing you can kind of hang up in the wall. She did it by hand. And then she told in several paragraphs what this church means to her. And the whole time I was I was I was blessed. So Father in Jesus name I ask you to put better into my friend's life right now in Jesus name better hope, the better promises, the better covenant, better, better in Jesus' name. For everything old to pass away and all things new in Jesus' name. And I know that a lot of her family are under attack. And I pray right now in Jesus' name, the better covenant established on better promises because of a better sacrifice that was ever offered in history, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Elijah offered a sacrifice that brought fire and rain, and yet you, you, Jesus, were a better sacrifice than that. Oh my God, oh my God. Jehoshaphat offered a sacrifice so powerful that all they had to do was go out and praise God and an entire army was defeated. We have a better sacrifice than that. I give you praise and glory for better. Would you lift your hands and give God praise? I love you.